Take it easy, but you live long. That crazy kid. All right, Mac, you can go on. We know where to get in touch with you. Got any kids, Mac? One. Female. You're lucky. There's something still in one piece. Open it, see if we can get a line on it. Just about made out his license number. 501-777. Lucky number. Check with motor vehicles. See who gets the prize. Sheriff Ramirez. of this. Some kind of gimmick to make his car go faster, maybe? Uh, that's no part of a car, that's for sure. Ah, uh, whatever it is. He won't be using it. It's a bit important to hide under a hood. Are you getting one of your hunches again? Well, it looks like he was sneaking it, doesn't it? Where to? I don't know. If I knew what it was, I might could tell. All right, Lester, tell you what. On the way back, we'll stop in to see that federal man assigned to this area. I think his name is William. Knowing Lester here and his hunches, I figure I might as well humor him. He did a hitch with Army Ordnance. Well, I'm not much of an engineer myself. I think it's some kind of a gun mechanism. Well, we're not far from the lab at Los Alamos. Why don't we take it over to them? Good idea. Los Alamos, New Mexico. A United States Experimental Center for Military Applications of Atomic Energy. No Alcatraz of Fort Knox was ever guarded more closely. There it stands in a mesa above the New Mexico desert, like some slumbering volcano. Its power and its secrets held deep within its walls. Its operations, many and varied, may not be described for security reasons. But this much can be said. Here at Los Alamos is found the cream of scientific genius the physicists and engineers who design and develop nuclear components of atomic weapons, who are responsible for detonating completed weapon assemblies and measuring the results. Overnight, the contents of the mysterious case were put through the works. Its practical characteristics examined and studied as against the theory of engineering principles. No part was left untouched, unrecorded. They were out to find out what made it tick, but they were taking no chances on not being able to fit the pieces back in place again. This was one Humpty Dumpty they'd be able to put together again. Although Williams never had any idea that the jigsaw puzzle brought to him by Sheriff Ramirez had any connection with atomic energy, he came to the right place. That innocent little bag of machinery was a brand new idea in atom bombs. A portable affair, so engineered it can be carried into the country in separate parts each part weighing less than 50 pounds. Sounds like a science fiction plot, doesn't it? Well, this one is true, quite true. Well, what about the force? Would it still pack the same punch? Size is no longer a factor, Mr. Williams. We're dealing with the atom, a speck, and each speck loaded with infinite power, the kind of power that can kick a million tons of water out of Bikini Lagoon, or right out of the Panama Canal. Does that make any sense, Mr. Williams? Enough to know what it can do in the wrong hands. The Atomic Energy Commission, using its most recently developed A-bomb, set off a blast the following morning at Frenchman's Flat, Nevada, 100 miles from Las Vegas. The reactions throughout the country were mixed, ranging from jokes to serious comment. In Las Vegas, one of the players in the casino lost, claiming the blast had rocked a roulette wheel, doing him out of a winner. In Washington, D.C., Paul Regan, chief of the Security Investigation Division, had his own ideas about the incident. This time, we chose the spot. Tomorrow, it could be right out that window, or Los Alamos. Boy, maybe the answer. Well, there's an answer somewhere. 
My own guess is that the case was smuggled over the Mexican border. Why not on its way to the Mexican border? Well, for one thing, he was headed in the opposite direction when he crashed. Maybe he lost his way. Not according to a check of gas stations leading from the border. He stopped to gas up a few times. That sheriff and his staff working on it? Yes, sir. Funny. A job like that would be trusted to a kid. Why not? Who'd suspect a lamb? Well, it's your lamb from now on, Johnny. I'm transferring you from the New Mexico field office and assigning you full time to this job. So double check to make sure. You know, these are no ordinary thugs like you get on income tax evasion, but fanatics who consider it a privilege to die. Resources, tricks, and genius on their side. Run down every move that kid made up to the crash. I'll keep figuring from this end. Good luck. Thanks. But all that led to was a lot of exercise. According to the boy's friends, he was okay in their book. Tough break for Jonesy, being measured for a coffin instead of the GI uniform he was scheduled to put on next month. They dug way back in Jonesy's background, talked to his minister, his school teacher, his former employers and girlfriends. But nobody had a bad word to say against Jonesy. Nobody but his mother. That was only out of bitterness for the fates which had snuffed out so young a life. A life that cared about nothing except racing cars and motorcycles. Racing cars and motorcycles. That kind of a hobby takes money. Where'd he get it? Odd jobs when he wasn't working steady. That would just about pay for the gas. I'm beginning to think he didn't know what he was delivering. And I'm beginning to think you were right the first time. Nobody'd suspect a lamb. I'm not going to give you the business that you were hand-picked for this job. You weren't. I take it for granted that every man here is already hand-picked and qualified. You also know what we're up against and what it means. Our job is intercepting the rest of those bomb parts. Now, maybe they're all headed into New Mexico. Maybe not. But wherever their point of assembly is, we've got to stop them. Gray, alert all stations and field offices to notify us of any unusual operations. Yes, sir. As an extra precautionary measure, we will assign a special detail to the New Mexico area around Los Alamos. They were lucky with the first installment on that bomb, Regan told them. Next time, it might not be so easy. Williams studied the setup against possible infiltration. Even the Security Investigation Division men assigned to the operation was subject to the strict regulations and security measures. Anything was possible when you were dealing with a bunch who could figure out a portable bomb. And while special forces were being concentrated in and around New Mexico, waiting for more of the parts to show up, two events occurred to focus attention elsewhere. First, a radar screen operated from a nearby training camp reported the presence of an unauthorized object deep in the Louisiana bayous. sentries went on a search detail, discovered that a helicopter had landed. The pilot was picked up and held for questioning. Williams was summoned to New Orleans, identified the pilot's metal case, as another portable section of the dread bomb. What kind of fools do you take us for? All right, so I'm stupid. A guy propositions me to deliver a bag in a swamp, 500 bucks, no questions asked, I take it. I didn't know what was in it. What did he look like? My height, maybe. Black hair, mustache. Oh, it was brown. I don't know for sure. What else? He might have been a foreigner. He had a French accent. Ninety percent of the Cajuns around here speak French. I'm not this way. I've lived around here all my life. I'd know if he was... This the man? No, sir. If you're telling the truth, we'll find out about it soon enough. If you're not, you're a poor excuse for a citizen. I needed the money. Is that $500 worth your life? Your honor? Call him for transfer to Washington. Next, it was New York's Coney Island to be spotlighted. It was Sunday, the temperature 90. 
one of those humid days for which New York is famous. The evening papers would feature record crowds at Coney. And while the millions were having themselves a time, just about a mile offshore, a lifeguard making a routine inspection of marker buoys was about to play a star role in the next chapter of the drama. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. this thing back where you found it. What is it, anyway? Bait for a fish. I don't get it. You don't have to. Take my word for it. It's important. And be sure you tie it up exactly the same way you found it. Right. This time, the bait worked. Williams, who had flown to the new area of activity, flashed orders to the Coast Guard cutter standing by to reel in their fish. Again, as in the case of the helicopter pilot, the fisherman claimed to be the innocent dupe. He had been approached by a stranger at the Fulton Street market during a period last week when the fish weren't running well. Five hundred dollars he gave to me to pick up Satchel. What did he look like? Big, like him. Is this the man? Oh, no, he had gray hair, he had blue jeans. All I got to do is deliver Satchel to locker, 12 o'clock. What locker? Pennsylvania station number 75. What is this? I don't understand. What do you expect to find in that locker? A present I bought for the children, some saltwater taffy. Open it. I'm so nervous I can't get the key to fit. Give me the key. the wrong locker. All right, mister. Well, it's seven after 12. It's a pretty small box for a locker this size. That's our man, get him. Smart. Nothing left to chance. I tried to warn you, they weren't amateurs. Hello, Lindley. Hi. Well, get that fisherman to do any talking? Oh, he didn't know any more about it than the pilot did. All he was interested in was making a fast buck. How about you? Did you get that thing to do any talking? First time I performed an autopsy on a satchel. Well, it's galvanized iron. Common variety. Any check as to manufacturer? European make, I believe. I've been trying to find out its resistance to seawater. Now, these strips have been soaking in a solution of seawater for different lengths of time. Now, this one has been soaking for 12 hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one for 24. Mm. And uh, this, a little over 48. 
You'll notice that it matches the side of the case when it was pulled out. In other words, the case had been soaking for over 48 hours. Just about. In New York Harbor, being just back of Coney Island, it could have been dropped off by any incoming ship. You got a paper? Yeah. Incoming from where? Any European port. Here we are. 48 hours. Thanks. Forty-eight hours. Forty-eight hours before we picked up the case, the French liner Felicitate docked. But it didn't stop at Coney Island. No, it didn't, but it could have passed a motor launch, or even a rowboat could have picked up the case and anchored it to the boy. Maybe, maybe it's a mistake to keep it out of the papers, and not to let the public know what they're up against. Why shouldn't they know that the same little firecracker we developed might be dropped right into our own backyard anytime? Maybe even a better one. Smaller, more powerful. And it wouldn't take too many of them to paralyze us. Hanford, Washington, where plutonium for the A-bomb is produced. The half-mile-long K-25 plant at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, producers of uranium. Los Alamos, main arteries like Los Angeles, Pittsburgh, Washington, and New York, with its teeming millions, and the harbor. Just a few prize packages can do it. But don't take my word for it. Mr. Sands here is an expert on civil defense. Well, rather than just tell you, I brought over some film to show you what'll happen if the atom bomb hits this country. Now you'll get an idea of what we're up against if we fail to bring in every single part of that portable bomb. And while we're talking here, planning and wondering, they may be ready now. It'll be any American city. Some normal day around noon, maybe. People looking for work, others working. Kids coming home from school, rush hour, when with no warning. Those caught within the epicenter, the area extending for one mile from the point where the bomb hit, are dead. Nothing is likely to survive. Winds build up to 800 miles an hour, tear through like knives, blowing out windows, twisting steel as if it were straw. And even outside the epicenter, buildings are left gutted, destroyed. Warehouses, factories, brick homes pushed off their bases, stripped of walls an entire city suddenly reduced to rubble. Thanks, Mr. Sands. Any questions not answered by that? Any idea where they might turn up next? Where they might be coming from? Who knows? So far, they've tried getting in by land, sea, and air. One thing is sure, it won't be any single concentration as we thought. They could show up anywhere. The password became, on your toes. Everything and everyone became suspect. From the Pacific to the Atlantic coast, straight up into the sky, deep into the heart of the country. Watchful eyes watched and probed and checked and hunted. Wherever there were satchels and pieces of luggage, wherever there were parcels on the move, and as the net was tightened and pulled in, there were results. One metal suitcase was found in the possession of a sailor, shipped home from a Mediterranean harbor. An abandoned baby carriage accounted for another. But not all the go-betweens had to be routed out. One of them developed a case of conscience and delivered the satchel to a local precinct of his own accord. Another one became panic-stricken and dumped it into an empty lot where some kids would later find it and bring it in. Hey, there's lots of activity going on in there. Hey, Cooper, Daily Ledger. Something big going on? Not a thing, Cooper. Just a routine security check. Where'd you get the bag? From a woman at the bar. Come on, come on. You couldn't think up a better one than that. I mean, I never lived to see my wife, honest. What's your business? I'm in between right now. Yeah, in between the devil and the deep blue sea. Two felony convictions, parole. Now, where did you find the satchel? No, 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 no. The satchel. The satchel. 
你唔晓唐话，我又唔晓番话，我哋赚讲嗰啲见你讲咩啊 ？Sometimes comic, sometimes tragic. The search went on, and like the other parts, it found its way to the weapons laboratory at Los Alamos, where the display was taking on frightening proportions. Six parts, six guesses, four of them exactly the same, even to weight. That means they have four prize packages planned, at least. And the other two, totally different sections, but all part of the same pattern. That makes three different parts altogether. Any idea how many it would take to make up at least one of the bombs? No way to tell yet. They'd still need a critical mass. The heart of the bomb, Mr. Williams, the actual element that produces the nuclear chain reaction. Either plutonium or uranium-235. And that's it? It would be good to know how close they are to the real thing. Well, that's your department. How's it going? Same spiel, different words. I got stopped by another newspaper man. I don't know how much longer we'll be able to stall them. As long as we have to. We've enough to do without throwing the public into a panic. It's getting tougher. We've got them all away from Virginia to New Mexico. You can add a pennant to Connecticut, too. What? This time, it's one of our own subs docked in at New London. With uranium welded onto the hull below the waterline. Uranium? How soon does Dr. Hallman figure they'll be ready for that? Too soon. And here's another little item to mull over. The stuff was removed in spite of the guards. No one saw anything? Just the wound in the ship. A Geiger counter told them what had been there. Where was the sub in from? Marseille, France. Was that the only port she touched the last time out? No, two others before France. Well, since we haven't been able to make any contact locally, why not try it through the source? What source? The way I see it, France. Well, why pinpoint France? Because that's where the belly of the octopus lives. Look at the tentacles and where they're reaching from. Marseille, France. The last port the sub touched before coming here with uranium on the hull. Previous to that, Dr. Hav and Lisbon. What about the metal suitcase we picked out of that hot rod crash in New Mexico? We've since learned it happened ten days after a French boat with a Marseille registration docked at Tampico. But nothing says the boy was in Tampico. What about the sailor we picked up with one of the parts? He was shipped home from somewhere in southern France. I hadn't even stationed in North Africa before that. Just the same, it adds up to a common denominator. If there's any one place the belly of the octopus is cradled, it could be right there. So you figure a roping job might do it, huh? Partly. All right, let's hear your idea. Order the sub back to Marseille. One of our men on it. Yes, sir. Might just be they'll try to use the sub again. Sounds reasonable. Who have we got familiar with Navy? Oh, Lohman, Sperry, Goldman. He should have picked Navy instead of Air Force. Well, they all salute the same. Yeah, only one of them knows the difference between the bridge and the galley. Suppose I were assigned to some special duty, like the preparation of a motion picture short on the operation of a sub. What do you think? You might get by that way. Wouldn't have to take an active part as a sailor. All right, Williams, get yourself another name and a couple of manuals on training films. I'll see about a commission for you. Ensign Peters reporting for duty, sir. At ease, Mr. Peters. Nice to have you aboard. Thank you, sir. Training film on the operation of a sub, huh? Well, we've got the equipment and the personnel. Yes, sir. We'll see that you get all the cooperation you need. Thank you, sir. Marseille waterfront, old port, 
gateway to southern France, crossroads for seamen of all nations, a melting pot for some without a country to call their own. Several of our men are already stationed about the submarine base. Good. I want to get started right away. Padre here will work with you. You probably will need an interpreter. I sure will. We'll hit it off okay, pal. Say, that sounds real American. It is. Yonkers, New York. The name's really Andy. <laughs> How was the trip across? Uneventful. Mm, not much more to report from this end, except assurances that the French will give us a free hand in this case and they'll do all they can to help. Uh, meanwhile, we got this list of names together for you. All possibilities for one reason or another, and all known enemies of the United States. But nothing definite? Mm, not enough to swap the waterfront hangout, Le Café Henri, for a cell. The Café Henri? They serve excellent refreshments there. I'll let you know. a guy homesick. Been over long? Uh, one day to be exact. How long are you going to stay? I don't know for sure. I buy you a drink? Got one. Tell you about that clarinet player. Buzz Olin? He's up there with Benny Goodman and Artie Shaw. Yeah, he plays real great. I wouldn't mind meeting him. Oh, no sooner said than done. Come on. Buzz, you've got an admirer. Hi. Did you play? No, I just listen. Good. I don't like competition. <laughs> Sit down. Join the party. Dave, come over and have a drink with us. Excuse me. Got to keep the customers happy. What's the name, sailor? Oh, Peters. Horace Peters. Horace, I want you to meet Margot Wayne, one of the prettiest reasons Americans come to France. Enchanté, officier. How do you do? Don't get any ideas. Leo, here's her husband. Where are you from, friend? Brooklyn or Texas? Neither. Hey, you see, honey, not all Americans come from Brooklyn and Texas. <laughs> Nothing but routine on Olin. Musician. Played Italian, French Riviera, Paris. 
Now, Kathy, I'll read my say. No background? That is picture? Copy of his passport photo. Keep on all Americans over here. Do you mind if I borrow it? Uh, what about Dave Norton, the leader of the quartet? The one Olin worked for? Norton studied music here under the GI Bill of Rights. Stayed over. Complete dossier, clean slate. Olin was very friendly with the Waynes. Might as well check on them while we're at it. First name? Leo. Hers is Margot. This is better. Leo Wayne, private, signal corps. Engineering degree, MIT. Married to a Bordeaux girl, Margot Quattro. His father was a French collaborationist. Wayne is 29, no visible means of support. Suspected of subversive activity in the army. Dishonorable discharge. Any pictures on them? There you are. Thanks, Captain. I'll see that these are returned to you. Now, this is important, Dave. I'm trying to get a line on Olin. Well, uh, he was a kind of a moody character. No, I don't mean that. When did he tell you he was leaving? Well, it's just it. He didn't. I wouldn't have known about it, except I owed him a couple of days' salary. Did he have any reason? Anyone sick at home or anything? Ah, no, not Buzz. He just got restless. Had a good, solid job. Had lots of jobs. Never stuck to any of them. Did you take him to the plane? Yeah. And me and the Waynes, they're his pals. Very close. Well, she's the one who first gave me the knockdown of the guy. As a matter of fact, he left me in a spot. Not even a chance to replace him. I tried to talk him out of it up to the minute the plane left early this morning. Did he have much luggage? Buzz? Nah. <laughs> All he owned was a suit in his back and a couple licorice sticks. Do you happen to know where he bought the metal case he carries his clarinet in? I haven't any idea. Have the Waynes been around since he left? Not tonight, but they usually drop in about 11. Now, one thing more, Dave. I haven't been here. Gotcha. Thanks. Slippery boy. We'll check all the luggage shops. See if we can find out who made that clarinet case for Mr. Olin. While Williams, Andre, and the French police searched the noisy streets, the narrow waterfront, double checking every luggage maker in Marseille, back home the fuse was burning closer. More parts, more pins in the map. More questioning, and more midnight oil being burned. This was the place they looked for. This was the man who made the metal cases used to sneak atom parts into the United States. A client m'en a donné le plan. Il en a commandé 48. Son nom? Je me rappelle pas. Looks like you've run into something here. He made up 48 of specifications for a customer. Ask him where he delivered them. Où vous les livrez, Valise? Il est venu les chercher avec un camion. No good. Truck. Ask him if the customer that ordered the cases is one of these. Vous connaissez ce type? Pas du tout. Monsieur Neff? Ah! Cet homme en a commandé quatre comme les autres. Buzz Owen a four of them too. Four? Oui, quatre. Trois vides et un que j'ai arrangé pour une clarinette. One he outfitted for a clarinet. Pierre Neff travaille avec la police. Oui, merci. What did he say? Just that he cooperates with the police. All he could tell us was that someone had ordered 48 identical metal cases. And he identified Buzz Owen as having ordered an additional four. But he didn't identify Leo Wayne. No, he didn't. But with Olin's disappearance, Leo Wayne is our only lead. 
just because they were friends? Add that to the fact that Leo and Margot Wayne were seen around the cafe continually. And their friends were all a part of that special list you gave me. Also, he's been seen hanging around the submarine area. And it's more than just a coincidence that Buzz Olin ordered four identical metal cases when he only has one clarinet. Why don't you pick Wayne up, then? Because we don't have enough on him. But I'm more than convinced that he's tied into this. There were no metal suitcases. In fact, nothing of any importance. When we searched his apartment... Then what was he doing hanging around the sub? The subject of curiosity. Hundreds of people come down to the dock every day. Look, just... if Buzz Olin ordered four identical metal cases, then he or a friend must have had something to do with sneaking the uranium onto the hull of the ship. Well, if it is so, they must have had someone to work with. Someone right on the submarine. Exactly. How do we draw them out? Oh, we just wait. There's no time. We've got to force them into the open. How? They probably think the submarine will remain here for a while. We'll have it ordered back unexpectedly. If they plan to use the sub again, they'll have to do it right away. They'd be fools. Maybe they think we are. It's your show. Code this message. Attention, Security Investigation Division. Chief Regan. Je ne sais rien du jeu d'amour, 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 d'amour. Avec toi seul, je veux apprendre un jour, deux jours, toujours. Dis-moi, dis-moi que tu m'aimes aussi. Même si tu mens, je suis. Hi, neighbor. Sit down. Oh, Mr. Peters? Oh, you sound awfully glum. Didn't you have a good time in Paris? I wasn't even there. Lamar's another day, Horace. Have a drink. Thanks. That's just it. Tomorrow and then the day after. Goodbye. You're not tired of our country, are eh? you? Just beginning to have fun when we get called back. Gee, that's too bad. Well, maybe you'll be back again. Or maybe we'll all meet again in America. I drink to that. To the next time we meet, on either side of the Atlantic. To the next time we meet. Toujours, The courier flies out in the morning with duplicate microfilm. It's set for next Tuesday, 3 p.m. You all right? Yeah. <clears throat> Somebody slugged us. I tried to hang on to the guy, but I couldn't. Margot, we had our call. Microfilm, probably the whole setup on it. She handed that microfilm to a seaman. This material is from an officer's uniform. An officer? Yeah, and there are only six on the boat. I'll meet you back at the shop. Hi, Chief. Oh, Mr. Peter. Last night before we shove off? That's all the same to me. Why aren't you ashore celebrating? Well, I leave that to all the younger ones. I got an arm full of tattoos and two kids back in New London, Connecticut. 
Who's off the boat? Val Sears. Lieutenant Rand, Ensign McGrew, Ensign Wesley. Hi, McGrew. Hi, Peters. Log me out, will you, Chief? All right, Mr. McGrew. Gonna hit the sack? Yeah, might as well. Good night. I thought you said he was off the boat. Oh, he was. Came back to change his uniform. He was having that good a time he tore one. I think I'll tag along, just for kicks. located either of the Waynes yet, but I have two men working on it. All right. Listen, I'm at the Cafe Henri. Get that luggage maker and bring him over here right away. I'll be waiting. Hurry. Right. Officer sitting at a table. Ask him if McGrew, the ensign, is the one that bought the 48 cases. Pierre, regarde les deux officiers américains au table de coin. C'est le plus jeune, l'officier le plus jeune qui a commandé 40 valises. Le plus jeune. C'est le plus vieux. C'est le type. Not the ensign. The command. Jackson. Jackson himself and his aide, McGrew. Yeah. Cable Regan immediately for permission to arrest both of them, then meet me on the pier. Oui, monsieur. Moreau, you stay here just in case. Parfait, monsieur. Come on. Jackson, you're under arrest, sir. Close it. I'll take that gun now, Mr. Williams. Do as you're told, pal. Get underway. Record 315. Jackson, United States Navy. You must be having quite a time for yourself. Even the Security Investigation Division. How far does your rotten arm reach? What kind of an accident do you have planned for me? Or am I just going to disappear? No traces, no clues, nothing. Next time around, we'll have better luck. Somebody will. Rig for dive. Rig for dive.
Harmon, sir. Come in. We'll dock in about an hour. See to him. Yes, sir. Quite a setup you've got here. Right in our own backyard. Take it easy, fella. Imagine having the organization right here in Washington. Where have you got it? The Capitol? Is it the Capitol itself? Give me Regan right away. Where are you? In the drugstore just off G Street. Name of the place is Vaughn. Stay right where you are until we pick you up, understand? Right. It's Corrigan. Corrigan? Mr. Regan, Ensign Peters jumped out of the car and escaped. Pick him up at Vaughn's, the drugstore just off G Street. Vaughn's, off G Street, right.
for him, he's looking for us. Which came first, the chicken or the... Mr. Williams is here, sir. Send him in. Bad time. Yes, sir. Come on, sit down and relax, Johnny. You've been part of a war game, the most vital one this country has ever had. War game? To test our atomic defenses. And you hit on the answer before we were ready. You mean Commander Jackson and Ensign McGrew were the enemy? That's right. Commander Jackson is our expert on atomic demolition. And you discovered I was the one who ordered the metal cases. Did you know this all the time? Hadn't the slightest idea. Until you cabled for permission to arrest Jackson and McGrew, then we were informed it was a war game. Then why did you keep me captive on the sub? Well, couldn't give it away until the game was over and we knew how we stood. For a while there, it looked as though we had no defense against the real thing. But it's finished now, Johnny, and you did a great job. With a torn sleeve, we weren't staked out for you. I was slipping the last of the uranium aboard the sub when I ran into you and Andre on a dock. Couldn't take a chance. For a game, you play pretty rough. Sneaking atom bombs into the country is a rough business. Look at that hot rod kid, Jonesy. In war games, accidents happen. And the whole thing was make-believe. Even the suspects we picked up. Most of the military personnel trained for the job and let loose. Forty-eight of them, to be exact. Forty-eight. Forty-eight bags. One for each state. Kind of symbolic, huh? Forty-eighth man wasn't picked up till an hour ago. Well, who was it? Buzz Olin or Leo Wayne? Well, neither one. Wasn't Olin the man you wanted checked on arrival in New York? That's right. Well, your request arrived after he did. We still got a search order out for him. Who is this Wayne? Leo Wayne. Well, he's not on here. I'm not surprised because he's not a part of your war game. That's right. Buzz Olin ordered four identical metal cases and brought three of them into this country with parts for an atom bomb. When Leo Wayne meets up with Buzz Olin, there's going to be the biggest explosion you ever heard. Because Leo Wayne brought in the plans for the assembly of that bomb. That's what I've been trying to tell you all the time I was cooped up in the sub and playing hide-and-seek trying to get here. Are you certain the name Leo Wayne means nothing to the war games? There's no one by that name in the overall plan. And no one by the name of Margot Wayne either. While we were playing games, they were playing for keeps, operating behind the screen we had set up. They even penetrated your own crew. I saw Margot Wayne hand microfilm to one of the seamen. You sure you're not mistaking the games for the real thing? Check for yourself. Have Margot Wayne picked up, the luggage maker, too. He made 52 of those cases, 48 for you and four for Buzz Olin. Get through to Marseille. Yes, sir. You said something about microfilm. Then the plans for the assembly of the bomb must be on that film. That's right. That's a myth. Is it? I've lost track of the days. What day is it? This is Sunday night. Why? Because on Tuesday at 3 p.m., that bomb becomes real. Still haven't been able to find the woman. We haven't got much time. We've got to locate Wayne and Olin before noon tomorrow. How? Margot's contact on the sub. It wasn't you. Could it have been somebody else in on the war game? Commander Jackson and I were the only ones from the sub in on the game. Then it has to be the seaman. He should know where Wayne and Olin are headquartered. I can't believe it's one of my crew. If he's right, we have less than 24 hours to get to them. Cancel all liberty. Order all hands back on board immediately. Aye, sir. Report. One absent, sir. Pharmacist mate Owen Harmon. Dismiss the man. Aye, sir. Dismiss the man. Attention. We 
We questioned and double-checked the entire crew, except for the missing pharmacist mate, and I'm satisfied all hands are in the clear. Then it could be the missing pharmacist mate, Owen Harmon. It's the only possibility, but I don't see did how... Did he have access to any personal papers? No, all he did was keep Williams out of commission under my orders. No family or relatives? None listed. Order an all-out search for this man at once. Yes, sir. By 6 o'clock Monday evening, they had tossed every spot of sale of my fancy. Then, at 10.10 p.m., the body of a trussed-up pharmacist mate was fished out of the Potomac. A wire about his throat. And somewhere there was an A-bomb, assembled, loaded, and ready, waiting for enough precious seconds to be chopped away. Tomorrow would be Tuesday, another normal day in the life of a city. That is, until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Strangled. Same pattern, same methods. One is silence to keep him from tipping his mitt, the other because she already tipped hers. That makes it complete. No leads, no hopes, all errors. And only two chances out of 160 million of ever catching up with Leo Wayne or Buzz Olin. Buzz Olin. Musician. Yeah. Get me the executive secretary of the American Federation of Musicians. If he isn't in his office at this hour, get him at his home. It's urgent. Olin's a professional musician. He can't work without his union card. We'll find out which local he belongs to. They may be able to give us a lead on where to reach him. Mr. James C. Petrillo, president of the American Federation of Musicians, instructed the officials of the San Francisco local to cooperate fully with the investigation. I remember he called in sometime last week, and... Yes, here it is. He was out of town, and he left a number for Mr. Harrison to call. Long distance, operator 7-8. Seven, 7-8. Eight. Seven, eight. Thank you. Yukon 6, 7126, assigned to a party named Rollins. Rollins. Thank you very much. Keeps to himself mostly. Used to teach high school until he quit. Runs a sort of uh, rest home for a few people now. Manning, you and Reynolds go around that way. Clark, Hanson, you two stay put. Come on, let's take a look at Mr. Rollins' guests. from San Francisco, 10 miles from this innocent little ranch house, like the calm before the storm. A city awakening and getting underway. The sun climbing higher in the sky, and only a handful know the truth. But where do you go? What do you do in an emergency of this sort? Is it the Presidio that houses the bomb? Is the Golden Gate Bridge the focal point of attack? Or is it the Embarcadero? San Francisco Harbor, doorway to Pacific traffic, the ideal place for a bottleneck. Or the people themselves. The very people in their parks. Their streets. Their homes. And across the bay from the city, the search went on. Time and a premium. I'm glad to show you what it looks like inside. I did want to know what old ice houses were good for. <laughs> now you know. Where's Leo, Buzz? Turn around. Quick. No. 
Go ahead. Big hero. Figuring on bringing your friends running, huh? But you're a little late. Leo's delivering that prize package, but no one's ever going to find you, hero. sedan headed for a private airport beyond the Embarcadero. Block all bridge approaches leading to San Francisco. Proceed with care. Leo Wayne is armed. Got that? Right. Have a car meet us at the county line. I want to transfer a prisoner. And tell Commander Jackson to meet us at the airport. We have a blueprint of the bomb. All units. Vicinity of San Francisco, Oakland Bay area. Oakland Bay Bridge, Golden Gate Bridge. Attention. Do not attempt to apprehend black sedan without assistance. Do not fire on the vehicle. Proceed with caution. Relay all additional information of whereabouts to central offices. It's set to go off at exactly 3 p.m. Where's the time mechanism? Here's the trigger just under the casing. But I'm afraid they'd crash it first before Commander Jackson gets a chance to neutralize it. There he goes. Car ready to control. We picked up Black Sedan. He knows he's being followed. On Oakland Bay Bridge going towards San Francisco. Relay instructions. All units. Black sedan sighted on Oakland Bay Bridge, heading toward San Francisco. Car 8-0 following. Motorcycle units 411 and 414 have joined car 80. Sedan headed for Embarcadero. Taxi Dan, car has crossed drawbridge. We've been held up. To all units, sedan has crossed drawbridge. Car 80 and motorcycle units have lost contact. Black sedan heading towards Sloan's airport. We can reach the airport as fast as he can.
bed. I, I can't. They've got me Can you disarm it? How much time do we have? A little over two hours. Well, I'm not sure. You've got to be sure. Either that or drop it over Frenchman's flat. Can you fly this thing? I've flown them. <coughs> Just about make it. Take it up to 10,000 feet and stay there. Right. <coughs> <coughs> within the shadows of San Francisco. A band of assassins were cut down before they could wreak havoc on the unsuspecting people. And three o'clock is just the middle of another afternoon in the life of a city.